Hello, what's up? So, uh, it's check-in time and this time around I also have three more books to talk about and I'm gonna say that all of the books that I'm gonna talk about in this video are um, quite nice and in fact two of those books are five-star reads but I'm gonna start with the first one which is I mean, which is not exactly a five-star read but I think it's still kind of okay. <laughs> it was a three-star book and the title is Sergio Y from uh, Alexandre uh, Vidal Porto and uh, this author is from Brazil and this book was originally written in Portuguese. It was translated into English by Alex Ladd. So um, this book uh, it is set in mid-2000s I would say and uh, it is about a psychiatrist in Brazil. His name is Dr. Armando. And one day he, um, he meets a client, a new client, a teenage boy uh, named Sergio, who, who is basically Sergio from the title. Um, so the main thing in this novel is that um, despite um, having therapy sessions, uh, or you know, giving therapy to Sergio, um, he does not know that Sergio is someone who has intention of transitioning into a woman. So when uh, it follows that a few years later, when uh, he founds out that Sergio uh, ends up dead in America, and also at the same time he learns that Sergio has been living as a woman named Sandra. Um, he, he, Dr. Armando, uh, pretty much starts to doubt his capability as a psychiatrist because his years of um, having, uh, of giving therapy to Sergio, um, he doesn't know that Sergio had that intention and he wonders if this oversight of his potentially has led to Sandra's death in New York. You know, the fact that he does not know that what if Sergio has been struggling with this all this time and uh, this this struggle of, of, of them sort of uh, contribute to uh, her death um, in New York. Um, so as you can see, this book is uh, something of a uh, kind of like a, a story uh, an account of a trans experience but from an outsider's point of view uh, this was a book that I learned about from uh, Kim's channel middle of the book March because she included this book as part of her TBR for trans girl April which was a readathon uh, organized by Kevi, Se Kevi and uh, Willow of Books and Bao um, in, in April <laughs> and uh, I was interested in reading this book because it was quite short um, so overall I thought that this book was decently written and the portrayal of a uh, trans experience despite from an outsider's point of view does present some level of compassion although at the same time you know because it is a book written by a non-trans author um, and the story itself, the main character is not the trans person, but rather um, someone who observes a trans experience and giving his own interpretation of it uh, with his own biases and uh, prejudice. Um, this book sort of, uh, it, it, it is not exactly like um, a book that one could go for if one wants to read about a trans experience. Um, I would say there are quite, uh, uh, quite a few portrayals of transphobia in this book as well, which I would say it's, it's, it, it's, it's kind of in line with what this book is trying to convey, I would say. There are point of views from not only from Dr. Armando, the psychiatrist, but also from Sandra's parents who are sort of struggling with the fact that uh, their child is, uh, is a trans person and so sometimes you do get languages that may feel kind of, uh, not may, but languages that are definitely quite hostile 
uh, towards uh, trans people in general. Um, and also, this book does feel like it is written um, and geared, targeted mostly for audience who may not exactly understand uh, or know much about uh, trans people or trans experience because there are quite a lot of um, explanations which aren't really written in this kind of uh, heavy-handed way but more like uh, weaved in you know woven into the uh, narrative through different styles and techniques but still I would say there are quite a lot of um, information that um, some people may find to be a little bit elementary um, although I do appreciate the fact that uh, it, you know the you have this kind of book existing that are sort of targeted mostly for people who are less informed about uh, you know trans experience because in many parts of the world I would say um, there are a lot of people who just still do not like have much knowledge about the trans experience and uh, who are pretty you know because they they're not exposed to uh, they're not exposed to trans people and so um, they are just somewhat still you know in still somewhat ignorant so but I would say this book is kind of middling for me the characters motivation uh, Dr. Amandus uh, uh, motivation just doesn't really feel compelling to me like there's a lot of like um, self-centered driven motivation going on uh, basically this book is about his performance anxiety at his job and so I'm like you know I, I just don't feel like it's compelling enough for me to follow the story but because it's short I, I was able to finish it but yeah it, it it just didn't feel like a very strong pull, uh, at least uh, for me, with this book. So, I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. So, I'm going to move on to the next book, which I have a single book video about, and I'm going to link that uh, down below in the description. And this one is Saman by Ayu Utami. Oh my gosh, the glare! <laughs> the cover is really glaring. Um, so this book was originally written in Indonesian. Ayu Utami is an Indonesian author and uh, this book was translated from Indonesian into English by Pamela Ellen. So Saman is about a, um, a man named Saman who is originally an, uh, who is originally a Catholic priest priest and then um, one day he he finds himself basically he is sort of assigned to a location somewhere in Sumatra and there he discovers that there is a village where um, where uh, the, the the villagers are plantation workers but at the same time they are oppressed by the owners of the plantation they are being extorted and they are being treated unfairly and so he as a priest uh, decides to help these villagers in order to improve their lives further by, uh, by um, introducing new ways for them to sort of live their lives but then once the uh, you know, the, the, the powerful people related to the plantation knows about this, they start to bully the, uh, the villagers and they start to treat these villagers really, really horribly. And I'm talking about super, super horribly. And, they, uh, and this would eventually um, uh, lead to Saman, the priest. Uh, at that time, he's still not known as Saman. It is more like a nom de guerre. Um, the priest being caught by these people and tortured and the aftermath is that he escapes and he becomes an activist. Um, so it is after he becomes an activist that he changes his name to Saman. Now at the same time this book also features four female characters, four Indonesian young women who are quite, who hold quite liberal views on their own sexuality and this book shows how these four women, their names are, let me check, 
uh, Shakuntala, we have Laila, we have Chokorda, and we also have Yasmin. So these women are friends. And um, these four women would eventually cross paths with Saman. And that sort of lead to some interesting story unfolding as uh, these four women are involved in someone's activism work. They all just kind of have a similar spirit towards the social justice cause that uh, someone is championing. Um, I find this book really, really interesting because I don't really know how to categorize it other than say that it is literary fiction. <laughs> um, but I don't really know exactly who is the most important protagonist in this book. Um, perhaps it is Saman because the book's name is Saman, but then the female characters are also quite important. Uh, Lila and I would say Shakuntala especially has the strongest voice in this book as well and we really see them as, a char as characters being explored in this book, uh, having their own stories and their own arcs. Um, but that aside, I also think it's really exciting to read a book that is written in different forms within uh, the same novel. So we have different parts, the chapters written in different POVs, and also some parts are written in different, different forms, like we have epistolary form, we also have traditional prose form, so I think that's really exciting. Um, I'll talk more about this book in, a, you know, in the single book uh, video, uh, for this so you can check out that link to know more about this but I'm just gonna say I really 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 love this book um, so yeah moving on to the next one the last of the day <laughs> it's by Camila Sosa Villada it's called bad girls I also had a, a single book uh, video about um, about this book which also I will link in the description box and this book was writ uh, written originally in Spanish. Uh, Camila Sosa Villada is an Argentine writer and it was translated into English by Kid Maud. So this book has a... It, it follows a protagonist also named Camila who is a trans woman. And it follows Camila's life in not necessarily chronological... Uh, um, chronological form but we rather we see like vignettes of Camila's life um, jumping around time uh, so it's more like a collection of or vignettes of memories of sorts and uh, we follows her life when uh, uh, she's still living with her family as um, at that time as a boy but someone who is uh, um, ostracized by her own family because of uh, her tendency to be feminine and uh, how she's driven towards some uh, things that are more feminine, activities that are more feminine such as makeup and all. And her father especially is, is an abusive man who, um, who engages in alcoholism and also domestic violence. So it is not a happy childhood for Camila at all. And when she runs away um, from home, she eventually discovers a group of trans women um, who work as sex workers in uh, Sarmiento Park in uh, Cordoba, Argentina. And she would eventually live with these uh, women and uh, just sort of have a um, found family of sorts and it's really heartwarming but it's not all happy in this book because this book is also very very brutal and it's really honest in how it shows the brutality that is happening towards the trans women in this book mainly because of the society's um, transphobic views of these individuals. Um, and it definitely does not hold back in showing all of the violence and uh, the tragedy that befall these individuals. But this book is far from being a misery porn of sorts because at the same time this book 
never forget to include moments of celebration. Uh, it, it will include a lot of moments of happiness as well. And you can see from this book, um, whenever those moments are explored, we feel happy with the characters as well. When, when sad things happen, we feel sad with them. Um, and what I'm trying to say is that this book is a mix of both happy and sad, and, and that makes it feel like a really human book. Um, but again, it is a very honest and passionate book. Uh, the emotions just all feel very real, and this is what I really, really love about this one. So yeah, another five star books for me. Again, I talk more about this book in a single book review video that I link down below, so you can check that out if you are interested, but I highly, highly recommend this one. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about in this video, and um, it's Tuesday, I think, right now. Um, it's Tuesday morning right now, and uh, I actually plan on having my own personal uh, reading marathon. <laughs> Maybe like an, an hour reading marathon. <laughs> um, and I am going to do that now. So I'll see you again in a different one. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching, and bye.